Welcome to Overpod, the show that hosts overemployed individuals. I'm Evie, your host, and today we're inviting back Ben. He's here to give his experiences in OE and his journey. So let's welcome the mastermind behind the masterclass, Ben. Great to have you on the show again, buddy. Hey, Mevi, good to be back. It looks like people enjoyed the first episode, so I feel like we, uh, we could have a lot of success with this series, and it's going to be fun to get people talking about this. Oh, yeah. So right off the bat, let's dive right into it. Uh, how was uh, your overemployed week? I mean, pretty typical. You know, every week kind of fades in with every other week. Um, obviously, it's basically the same shit, different day, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Like when I'm doing my OB stuff, right? Sometimes I feel a little like burnt out, not like burnt out as per se, but you just get tired sometimes, right? So I just wanted to know, like, what are your views on that or your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone that works hard in any job, whether it's OE or not, or even if it's a business, but yep. especially in OE, I feel like people get this because they're kind of used to working one remote job and they're kind of used to not putting in that many hours. So when they get two remote jobs or more, yeah, I mean, you get burnt out, right? Like, you get overworked. But I would, I don't know if, yeah, burnout is probably not the best thing to say because it might limit you, but it's basically just hard work, right? And everyone will get tired. You'll get tired, but it's also satisfying. Like, do you yeah. feel satisfied even though sometimes you feel burnt out? I mean, just the thing, the way I view is, is I don't really think that you you could get burnt out because even if you have one job, and let's say you're putting in, like, 10 to 12 hours a day, because if you're on a private company, you're most likely wanting wanting to get promoted, right? Per se. So if you're working, let's say at Microsoft, right, you're gonna you can work your ass off. Yeah. You get that promotion to you want to be the best person there is at that company. So I feel like whether you have one or four, right, you're you're gonna feel burnt out nonetheless, right? Yeah, you'll you'll fill the time with the work, right? Yeah, yep. you're right. But I'd, I'd personally I'd rather have less demanding jobs multiple of them than one huge demanding job right of course for sure yeah so ever since i've become overemployed my life has changed obviously drastically so how was your life before OE? yeah so probably like many people nothing too out of the ordinary right so before i became employed in tech obviously i was more on the broker side i was pretty broke <laughs> not like terribly living but still broke. But not a top g right yeah definitely not a top g <laughs> uh but the thing is once i got my first tech job i started living obviously more comfortably but still basically paycheck to paycheck kind of like most people i mean you're still saving money but you're not really saving anything substantial like you're not going to be able to buy it a super nice car or anything right so that was my life before and then once i got into being overemployed obviously it changed a lot i mean are you still working the the current job you work when you were living paid to check to paycheck as well no and that one no not at the moment oh, okay okay so so how's your life now <laughs> yeah obviously different i mean like I said, basically paycheck to paycheck, just saving maybe a grand or two per month. Yep. Now it's obviously drastically different. And it's not exactly about the exact income I have right now. I think anybody, once you get to over 10,000, 10, 15, 20,000 a month after tax, yep. you notice you really start to have a lot of disposable income, like for discretionary spending, right? So mm -hmm. that's where, where your life kind of really can change. Yep. And you can spend a you can kind of piss away a lot of money without having big backlash on your personal life and your debt or whatever. Obviously, if you make stupid purchases, like massive ones, you could screw yourself. But for yeah. the most part, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. I mean, you're making uh, a shit ton of money, right? So do you make any huge purchases uh, throughout your OB journey so far? Uh, yeah, so this is actually something, yeah, I'll answer that quickly. And then I'll also kind of give a tip in terms of what I've noticed with this yep. and kind of how to manage it, like how yep. to not just purchases, but like kind of how to manage your finances once you become overemployed. Right. Because so answer, to answer the question first, so I have made a lot of big purchases, nothing in terms of cars or houses, like big things, but yep. in terms of like things like expensive dinners, like spending 500 bucks on a dinner, for example, before being overemployed was something that was kind of foreign to me. Like I, I wouldn't buy anything more than 
20, 30 dollars as a main course at a restaurant, right? Oh, wow. Now a two hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollar dinner is kind of just meh, right? I just do it on occasion pretty often, right? You, you Things like that. Saturday by any chance? You want to out to dinner? I mean, we could. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then even things like small weekend trips, right? Or week-long trips, whatever, spending a couple grand on a couple nights, maybe going to a nice hotel with nice restaurants, watching a nice show, some events in some new city that you've never been to, right? So things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to recommend that if you are becoming overemployed, like you just yeah. started it, especially in the first few months, I would highly recommend that you kind of get it out of your system in that way. So spend some stupid money, spend some fun money, have some fun with it, because especially if you've been broke before, you're going to want to experience it and you should experience it. There's no point in just saving every penny you have, but spend it that way. Because yeah. if you instead spend it on huge purchases, which I actually know some people that have done that, they bought very expensive cars after becoming overemployed because they can afford it. Right. But the yeah. issue is once you lock in that huge debt, it's fixed, right? Like you can't really get rid of it. So let's say something goes wrong with your multiple jobs. You still have to pay that debt every month. But if you like spend a grand even on a dinner, that's one night, right? Once yep. that night passes, even if you lose your job, you're not still locked into paying monthly payments. It's mm -hmm. fine. You can yep. you can go back to saving more, right? So, yeah. I mean, the way I view this is, uh, so for example, uh, when I first started off, uh, and when I got my first job, let's say, right, I wasn't really making that much. I I would say around 70K. And I was living, yeah. like you said, I had, I had debt too. I was living paycheck to paycheck. And then all of a sudden, I landed three. So I'm still working my, my first one, but now I'm working three at one time. Yeah. So it was very euphoric at first, working three jobs and seeing a shit amount of money coming into my bank account, right? And I'm like, wow, I can go out, buy dinner, buy gifts, buy anything out really want in this whole world you cannot maybe not in this whole world but you you, you get the idea right for sure so, but the thing is as months go by you feel broke you get what i mean yeah that's another the thing. more you make the more broke you feel after time goes by at least that's my mindset so now i want to i want to get to a point where i'm making like let's say 50k a month i think at that point i'll be satisfied but then again you never know right when i get there i'm like hey i need 100k a month yeah, so that's another thing where overemployment can really change your perspective on money, which I think is amazing because a lot of people have kind of a fixed mindset on money and they don't really understand how much yeah. is really enough. Like once you get to a point where you're making over 10K after tax per month, you can kind of spend money on almost anything in terms of smaller stuff. Obviously, you can't take private jets. You can't go on vacations to Dubai every other week, but you oh, yeah. can basically buy anything most people desire. Like you can buy a nice house, you can buy a nice car, whatever, right? But the thing is, once you get to that point, you realize that 10K per month yep. is not really that much. Like, let's say you save every 10K every month for 10 years. That's only about a million dollars, right? Like, it's still good, but that's not realistic. And it's not that much money. A million dollars, you can't really retire on that even. Right? So it does really change your perspective on money. Like before you're making that with one with just one paycheck, you're like, oh, 10K a month would be amazing. But once you get there, you're like, no, I want 50. <laughs> I want 100K per month, which obviously exactly. might not be needed. But yeah. when you get there, you'll get there. You know, I'm going to tell you a little secret here, right? On pretty much, I haven't really told anyone this, but the reason why I started this channel in the first place, you know, so... I mean, so I told you like I was working one job only before and life was pretty goddamn tough back in the days, right? So I uh this was around when COVID hit. So I was really stressed out. I'm like, what if I lose my job because of COVID? And it was just a really stressful and confused time. Uh it was hard for me to hit my my mortgage payments, my my car payments, or any type of payments like that. And I don't know. I think I stumbled upon a video where I kind of heard about uh, overemployment. So I went ahead and I applied to multiple jobs because I'm like, hey, if I have more than one, I won't be scared to lose one job, you know? So yes. I went for it. I applied to one, honestly, just for shits. I, dude, I was so much of a pussy. I didn't want to do that, you know? So I was so scared. I wasn't going to accept it, but I just went for it anyways. No, then I, I got accepting and I'm like, okay, holy shit six figure job more than i'm getting right now i'm like do i accept this and quit my my first one or do i just jump in both and you know what i'm like 
I'm, I'm going to take the risk. So I, I took both on. And to my surprise, it wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be. Not only that, I was not stressed by uh, potentially losing my, my, my job, getting laid off, right? So this goes into my question. So right now, I heard a lot of companies are laying off individuals due to a quotations recession. So what are your views on that? Do you think OE is recession proof? Yeah, so this is actually a really good question because a lot of people ask this. What do I do in a recession? How do I protect myself? What are the best ways to protect my money in a recession? And honestly, overemployment is one of those best ways because you ensure you have that active cash flow every month you're making money. And obviously, the more jobs you have, even if you get laid off at a, one job, if you have another job, you'll still be safe, right? You still have that income. And then obviously, you can start applying again, try to get another job. But the point is, you have backups. And the more backups you have, the safer you are. And I agree. the other nice thing actually about overemployment is that people don't really consider too much is when you're making double or triple the paychecks, you're getting the base salary, right, in your paycheck. So you don't have to depend on the stock markets doing good to make use of stock units that companies give you as compensation or bonuses. Let's say some companies do performance bonuses or stock market bonuses, and you only get that depending on performance of the company. No, when you're overemployed, you're just getting super good base salaries, right? So you don't have to worry about that when there's a recession. So overall, you're protected, you have backups, you're getting good cash flow. It's really one of the best things you can do other than starting a business on your own, which obviously is risky for a lot of people. Yep. But yeah, overemployment is really the really good choice for recessions. I agree. We, uh, so going on into uh, my next question here. So, so I don't really track how many hours I work a week. I'm more of a, like some weeks are tougher than others. Uh, for sure, right? But just wanted to ask you, how much hours do you put in on a week on average? How much work do you put in? Yeah, so obviously, this depends. And just like the answer to many over questions, but on average, I would say a typical 40 to sometimes 50 hour week, but even less sometimes, right? It just kind of depends on the week, the workload. All I'll say, though, is it's never over 40 or 50 hours on super crunch deadlines and sometimes it's less and even if it's like 20 hours a week of actual work that doesn't mean you're not like i'm not delivering quality work it's mostly just because that's just how it is at the time at that company right so it ebbs and flows and it's never too demanding like it's never going to be like an 80 hour wall street week right where you have to work 15 hours a day so that's the good part great to hear so just wanted to know, has Obi shifted your, your views on money personally? Yes, 100%. So I think we kind of touched on this earlier too, but yeah, basically once you start making more of that money, you realize you might want a lot more too, right? So obviously it's a slippery slope, but I think it's good to get to that point. Or the earlier, the better, right? So once you realize not that much money is like... You, you want more money, right? So it's good to get to that point early and it's, def it's definitely going to shift your perspective. All right, that's Ben, the mastermind behind the masterclass. Thanks for joining us today, Ben. Appreciate having you on the show. Hope you can do this again. Thanks a ton. Thank you. It was super fun today.